adventure into YouTube. My name is Chris and I aim to bring you some quality content around Football Manager, including tactical recreations, experiments and some playthroughs. In this first series, I'll look to recreate some famous sides of the past, um, trying to replicate their tactics in the game, as well as building a squad to match their players and then hopefully their achievements. So today we're gonna to start somewhere closer to my heart, where I'll be looking to recreate the tactic and the team of the Arsenal side that went unbeaten in the 2003-04 season, known as the Invincibles a feat only achieved by Preston back in 1888. Uh, Arsenal were managed by Arsene Wenger in its eighth season. They won 26 games, drew 12, and only lost zero. Okay, and onto the tactic. Uh, full disclosure, this is how I interpret it. After seeing multiple games and highlights on YouTube, watching interviews with the players and reading insightful articles. I was only eight years old at the time, so it was pretty hard to comprehend. What I'm aiming for is a high tempo, counter-attacking, expressive system uh, based around a 4-4-2, which is what Wenger described it as. I'll put some links in the description to some great goals that they scored from that time. If I had to choose one of these uh, preset tactical styles, it would probably be this fluid counter-attack. Uh, they run at the defense and look to counter. I'd probably want to be more attacking than this mentality though. So what we'll do is create our own style. So let's start with the base formation. The team lined up with what was thought then to be a classic 4-4-2, but often looked like a 4-2-3-1 with Burkamp dropping in behind and the wingers pushing up high. On the right here, we're gonna have an image displaying the formation that we're attempting to replicate as well as the players who played in those roles. In Football Manager, the, the formation you see here is the defensive formation. We can adjust where they are with player roles and duties. So what we want is the, the team to defend in two banks of four, which is what this is. And the forward partnership is probably the hardest to get right. Uh, Burkham operated in the number 10 space so often, it could be an attacking midfielder. So we're probably gonna drop Burkham deeper, but I'll get to that when we get into the individual players. So saying that, we'll go with a 4-4-2 and adjust as needed. We'll start with the mentality. Uh, many of the old players described this team with one word, attacking. Uh, they were fearless going forward and they knew they could beat anyone on their day. For the team instructions, I tend to be fairly minimalist. Um, so I know what, exactly what each one is doing and try not to overcomplicate it. It also means I get the most key tactical features into the side. So we'll start with in possession and the width we're gonna keep standard for attacking. We want to pass into space as this team thrived on killer through balls into that Henri and the wingers could run onto. Uh, we're gonna focus play down the left because that side of Cole, Perez and Henri tormented defenders in their time. Um, Gary Neville said that Henri uh, mentioned that the right hand side was like the crutch propping up the left. Uh, I'm not going to turn on overlap left as the wing back will do it anyway. I'm going to keep on directness and tempo as is for attacking so it is higher and slightly more direct. Could go higher if we really want to chase a game. In the final third I'm going to put on low crosses as Henri wasn't the biggest and they liked the balls along the ground. And also this team was a flashy side with world class players that like to express themselves. Uh, Wenger also didn't mind that as well, so I'm going to turn on be more expressive. I'm also going to turn on play out of defence, as uh, Wenger didn't like them losing the ball easily, and the defence had the uh, technical capability to do so. Okay, in transition. So, the team wouldn't actively counter-press like most modern teams do today, like Liverpool and Man City. They'd actually fall back into their defensive shape, into two banks of four, in order to regroup. And here's the main one over here. When possession has been won, we want a counter-attack. So they sat off a bit and allowed defenders to come towards them, then hit them on the break with the pace of Henri, Perez and Lundberg, and Burkamp linking it together, they'd penetrate that space that was left in behind. Ashley Cole also got forward a bit at left back. As for the goalkeeper, we want him to distribute it quickly to facilitate that counter-attack, and then I'm going to let him choose the best player to throw to, depending on the situation. Okay, and lastly, onto out of possession. This is our defensive shape, so what we look like without the ball. We wanna set up in a medium block uh, to win the ball back in midfield, and we're just gonna ask the strikers to drop that line of engagement 
uh, that encourages the centre backs to move forward with the ball 20, 30 metres so that we can now play more on the counter and attack the space back here that they've left. We'll stick with the standard defensive line. Uh, if we go too high, we might be punished with long balls over the top. If I do get quicker defenders, I might be tempted to up that. And pressing intensity, we're gonna go more urgent to win the ball back quickly and then get stuck in as well to win it back aggressively. Okay, now we'll talk about the positions and the roles that we're gonna put these players in to try and replicate that invincible side. We'll start with the goalkeeper with Jens Lehmann. So he was solid across the board, a commanding goalkeeper that had it all really, and he also liked to take the odd risk. And because of that, I'm gonna change that into a sweeper keeper in order to stop those long balls in behind. He's got take more risks on, and also Bernd Leno is a natural in that position. Emi Martinez is good back up there, so no signings will be needed. At right back, we had Loren. So Loren was a bit of an uh, underrated part of the invincible side. He was a solid fullback, always reliable, and could put in a good cross too. He wasn't anywhere near as attacking as Ashley Cole. Um, he was more reserved going forward. So um, he also played in midfield in Spain, so he had a bit of that technical ability as well. For those reasons, I'm going to keep it on fullback support and chuck Callum Chambers in there, as much as I love Hector Bellerin. Onto the right side of centre back which was Colo Torre. Uh, he's a player I remember watching in my younger years, just getting further forward, bombing on, taking long shots, um, and hitting pile driving free kicks. Arsene Wenger turned him in a into a defender um, when he signed him, so he has the technical ability to play out as well. Um, he was more of the cover to Sol Campbell on the left. Um, he had a bit more pace and intelligence about him, so he'd sweep him behind here. Someone who I'm looking for here is that someone with a player trait to run with the ball through the centre. Um, also, who might get further forward. And if he has long shots, then that's a bonus. Um, one to watch for this position is probably Rob Holding, but I will be looking to dip into the transfer market here. Onto the left-sided central defender where we have big, uh, powerful Sol Campbell. So he was an old school defender that would bully opposition forwards and win everything in the air. He was, in football manager terms, he was more of a stopper where he'd push ahead of the defensive line and, and win those balls before they came in. Colo Torre, as if I hover over the cover, uh, would drop a little deeper and sweep up behind. I'm not going to change them into this, as I think on defend, um, and if you get the right players, they'll do that anyway, and it'll become redundant. So I'm just going to keep them both on central defender, defend. So for this position, we do have William Saliba coming back on loan um, next season. Not sure how good he's going to be though, so we could make a big signing here as well. In left back, so we had the marauding Ashley Cole. He was a solid defender, but he was most remembered for those devastating runs going forward. He combined excellently with Robert Perez and Henri down that left hand side, but he only got three assists in that season. Um, he was a constant threat for the opposition though. So wing back on attack would be the perfect uh, role for him. Um, if you see here, he aims to overlap down the flank, provide width, run at his man and get crosses in from the byline. For player preferred moves or player traits now, I'm looking for someone that has the trait to get further forward and also play 1-2s with Perez and Henri. Kieran Tierney does look pretty good for this role, um, but I think they can be upgraded in the future. You see here, he does have good acceleration crossing and does like to run with the ball down the left. Okay, so now on to right mid where we have Freddie Lundberg. Freddie was a unique player in that he wasn't an out-and-out -out winger that liked to dribble, nor was he a wide midfielder who played deep crosses like David Beckham did. He came to Arsenal as more of an, uh, an attacking midfielder, uh, but we moved him out to the wing early on. He was famous for his angled runs in behind, where he'd get in behind and, and coolly finish. The opposition were often so transfixed on stopping this left-hand side that they left big holes here for Lundberg to run into and Lauren to get forward as well. So here I'm not going to go for the standard um, inverted winger, as this has the dribble more uh, instruction on, and he didn't dribble that much. So what I'm going to do is change into a wide midfielder on attack so he does get further forward as well as the instructions to dribble less, cut inside and roam from position. 
So he did like to roam around here. He wouldn't always stay out on the right and then he'd get in behind and, and slot it away. For player traits here, I wanna look for cuts inside and gets into opposition areas. It's really hard to find anyone that can suit this role. What I'm gonna do is choose Reese Nelson. He's quite a young player, so we can teach him those Lundberg traits. And we actually have Lundberg on the coaching staff so he can have one-on-one -on -one sessions and teach him his own player traits as well. Okay, now onto the defensive midfielder, Gilberto Silva. So Gilberto Silva's nickname was the Invisible Wall. When playing, he was more passive than most players in defense. And rather than tackle an opponent, opponent, he was more likely to shadow them and push them back. As a result, he actually went twice 45 games or more without receiving a single booking in his career, Arsenal career. Pretty amazing for a defensive midfielder. He was tall as well and often man marked the opposition's target man on goal kicks and set pieces. That'll be quite hard to replicate on Football Manager. Uh, the central midfielder on defend suits him perfectly. He wasn't a playmaker as such, but he did that, have that ability. But this role just makes sure he sits deep, uh, stops the opposition counterattacks, and controls the tempo of the game. Um, he's described himself that his role was simple, just to play those short passes to his teammates nearby. So because of that, I'm just gonna change his passing directness to short, and just try and retain the ball with a patient approach. Torreira is a good pick for this role, has all the mental attributes, just doesn't have the height, unfortunately. He is only five foot six. Um, so long term, I'll be looking to upgrade on a, on a taller player there. Okay, now onto the heartbeat of the team, Patrick Vieira. He played on the left side of the midfield and was a true exceptional box-to-box -box midfielder. So I'm gonna change him to a box-to-box. -box. Um, he was strong and powerful, often driving forward with the ball. Um, he was extremely hard working, really technical and a true captain that everyone looked up to with a lot of leadership. I remember him often getting stuck into the tackle um, with his long legs, so I'm going to turn on tackle harder. In terms of current Arsenal players, I'm not sure there is any. Arguably we never really replaced him all those years ago. One to look out for though is Matteo Guendouzi. Um, he does have a lot of potential in this game, but I might look to sign a superstar uh, for this position. At left mid, we had Robert Perez. So Perez was the, a classic inverted winger. Um, he'd cut in on his right. He loved to dribble and chip goalkeepers. He combined really well with a fellow Frenchman, Henri, at the top. Um, and he'd sit extremely narrow. So defenders, the opposing fullback, wouldn't know whether to go with him or um, stay put. And if they went with him, Ashley Cole had acres of space in behind. He had a great eye for a through ball as well and was quite a creative force. So I'm gonna chuck on passing risks and take more risks. A player here, I'm looking for a creative technical player who also had a bit of pace um, and could shoot. So Emile Smith-Rowe has some potential, but again, I'll be looking to dip into the transfer market here. Okay, onto the front two. We had Thierry Henry and Dennis Burkamp. I'll start with Burkamp, uh, who was famously afraid of traveling by plane, called the non-flying Dutchman. He played with this grace and elegance and just oozed class. He'd drop deep into this number 10 position here um, with space to turn, play through balls and do fancy flicks and touches. For this position, I really weighed up whether to do the deep lying forward on support. Um, but I ended up, after a couple of tests, realizing that he got too far forward and wouldn't ever be in this space to play good through balls. So for that reason, I'm just gonna drop back into the attacking midfielder strata and then change him to an advanced playmaker on attack. This way he's gonna take more risk with passing. He's gonna dribble more, shoot only when the, the best occasion presents itself. And I'm also gonna add, get further forward. If there is a um, defensive midfielder on him, I might ask him to move into channels just to find some space. I'm also gonna ask him to hold up the ball. So when he does get it, the, the wingers and honoree can start making those runs. Um, and so he can find them with a, with a good through ball. Mezu Otsu actually looks too perfect for this role. Um, I'll just show you his profile here. Select him. Uh, you can see he's got a great first touch passing technique and vision to play those through balls. We've got player traits on the side here, who moves into channels, tries those 
killer balls, plays one twos, comes deep and looks for the pass rather than attempting to score. Perfect. And finally, on to my favourite player of all time, Thierry Henry. This guy scored 35 goals and got 14 assists in this season in all competitions, topping the charts um, in both for Arsenal. What he loved to do is hang out on the left and then cut in on his right on the side. Um, that's why I'm going to play him slightly off centre. Um, in Football Manager, I'll probably call him a complete forward as he loved to assist and contribute in build-up play as well. I'm not going to keep him on attack as he might be too separated from the midfield. So I'll put him on support and then the only team player instruction we're going to give him is stay wider so he does hang out on the left there. The best fit for this role would be Aubameyang. I'll show you his profile where he has that great finishing ability, awesome pace 20 and 19 and has these good player traits here where he places shots and knocks the ball past opponent. He also likes to cut in from the wings as well. And that is the complete tactic. Another point on Arsenal's invincible season is that they used a very small squad um, compared to today's standards. So if we have a look at the squad screen, we have about 30 players in and around the first team. So I will be looking to move a couple on on the transfer list that don't fit the system. Um, Nicolas Pepe could play right mid. Um, but he is a left footer. We did sign him for 72 mil, but we could look to cash in on him early. Granite Xhaka is another one I'm looking to transfer list. He's a modern footballer who doesn't really suit that side or any position in it. And Squadron Mustafi, who just isn't a good enough defender, um, lacking that composure and concentration. In terms of incoming transfers, what I'm really looking for is to plug these gaps in the system here. So looking for a couple of defenders, box to box midfielder and that Perez role. And then I'll look to move, uh, replace the aging players as well. So for the Toure role, I'm looking for that intelligent passing type player, preferably played in midfield as well. And the key one that stands out for me is Christopher Ayer. Uh, only 21, can play natural at centre mid as well. Great technicals, mentals, and six foot five giant as well. I also really like the look of Ruben Diaz from Benfica. He's young, he is very talented and can bring the ball out of defence like Toure did. And lastly, Dayot Upamecano, who we're linked to in real life, also likes to, to play his way out of trouble, very strong and quick, and has a lot to grow into. For the Sol Campbell role, we need someone a bit more powerful. So I've shortlisted Kurt Zuma, Nicholas Sula, and Milan Skriniar. Skriniar might be a bit too hard to get in the first season, um, but hopefully with some Champions League football, he'll come. Now for the Vieira role, I'm looking for a leader, a box-to-box -box midfielder who is good at almost everything. Um, a few names that come to mind is Ducouré from Watford, um, has those long strides like he used to have and is French. Um, Koke is, is the leader, has a great mentals, um, probably not as strong as Vieira was though. And finally, Milinkovic Savic. Anyone that's played the game in the last two years knows how good this guy is. Um, he has absolutely everything in his locker and that's probably the end goal. As for the Perez role, I'm looking for that tricky winger um, with dribbling skills and as, as well as passing and vision. So I've highlighted two Correas here, one from Lazio, who's got great dribbling, flair, off the ball movement, um, and then Angel from Atletico Madrid, also great technique, passing, pace, and dribbling. For the Gilberto Silva role, I'm looking for that really good tackler um, with great mentals to know uh, when to tackle and when not to. I've highlighted Wilfred and Didi from Leicester, as well as Bakayoko, who's on loan from Chelsea at Monaco. Great tacklers um, and, and very strong as well. And also got that height. For the Dennis Burkamp role, I've had a look at two players, including James Madison from Leicester and Donny van der Beek from Ajax. Strangely enough, he's actually dating Burkamp's daughter in real life. And lastly, for the Henri, the modern day Henri, I think you can look no further than Anthony Martial. He is super quick, has good finishing and dribbling skills, likes to play shots and could grow into that Henri mold. Will cost a hell of a lot of money though. 
Ideally, it'd be Kylian Mbappe, but he's too good for Arsenal now. And finally, I'm looking to add a few staff additions to help with this Invincibles era. Uh, namely, Ashley Cole, who's an unemployed coach. Not very good, but I'll get him. Dennis Burkamp, he is quite good, technically and with attacking. And then finally, big mad Jens Lehmann, who is only a coach. Very good goalkeeping stats. Apparently isn't a goalkeeping coach, but I'll tempt him to come too, to help win this title. So back to the tactic. There it is. I will write up the details of it in the uh, description so you can use it in your own saves. Let me know how you get on. And catch me in part two where I show you the incoming transfers, how we've got on, and if we do manage to go unbeaten. Goodbye.